A squirrel, starting at building A, um, time zero, travels along a straight wire, B, um, to building B. Um, this is the interval. The velocity is the graph right here. It's a piecewise linear function, so those are all lines. So it's nice and easy to find areas under curves defined by the graph. Okay. At what time interval, what, what time on the interval, if any, does the squirrel change directions? Now, you guys, for change of directions, isn't that where your velocity is? Zero. So this is your velocity function, so wouldn't it be change of direction there or there? But to make sure, um, when, when velocity goes zero, it doesn't mean he changes directions. It just means he stops. But does he change directions? Yeah. Does it go from positive to negative or negative to positive? Yep. Yes. I don't know. Right here, it goes from positive velocities to negative velocities, so he changed directions. And here it goes from negative velocities to positive velocities, so he changed directions. So according to A here, it occurs at 9 and 15 because there's a change of signs on velocity. Make sure you say velocity changes signs. A lot of people miss on the AP test. They say it changes signs. What's it? Velocity. Say the word velocity changes signs. You got that? Velocity. Too many people just say it or the function. Oh, what function? Uh, which, one you, which one are you talking about? Uh, oh, ooh. So be careful. Say that the velocity changes signs. All right. So B, <laughs> at what time in the interval 0 to 18 is the squirrel farthest from building A? How far? from building A is a squirrel at that time. So the first part is this, and the second part's what his distance is. So if you think about it, position is the integral of velocity. All right. At time zero, he's at building A. So at time zero, isn't he at position zero? Nope. Are you okay with that? He's at position A, at building A. So, and if I want to find the farthest, isn't that absolute max? So isn't absolute max, I'm looking for the absolute max, and to find absolute max, don't you need edges and relatives? Okay, so if I want an absolute max, it could be at the edges, and could it also be where the derivative equals zero? Now isn't velocity your derivative? So isn't, aren't these two points also where it could be an absolute max, or min? Because you got to remember, this graph is your velocity, which are your derivatives of position. So your max will be here, here, or at one of these two points. So you look at the chart here. Do you see how they have all four points labeled as possibilities for absolute max? Do you see how they wrote velocity is zero at those points? That's important to write that. You would need to write that to prove where you got 9 and 15. You can't just put 9 and 15, like they'll say, where'd you get 9 and 15 from, please? Tell me, tell me, please. So what you need to do is you need to state you got them because the velocity is zero there, and that would be where you have a relative extrema of position. Now, how'd they get all these values? Well, we started at zero. Then, to find the value 140, didn't they just find the area of that trapezoid? Or could you make it two triangles and a rectangle? They did trapezoid, okay? They just did a trapezoid area. How'd they get the area of this one? Well, didn't they minus it? Because isn't 140 this? And isn't this negative? So aren't you going to minus this area? Got it? And then how'd they get this area? Yeah, aren't you just going to add that trapezoid 90? See the 90 right there? Plus that little trapezoid? So isn't it easier to build off the previous? Instead of re-scratch from the beginning, they're just building off the previous each time. The 90 goes here. So out of all these, which is the maximum? Nine. So 140 is the maximum. So the, if the question is asking for, again, how far is it, isn't that 140? And does it say units in this thing? Were there units anywhere? So I think it's 140. Okay. Now that tells you the value of it. Okay, um, let me see here for a second. If I move this up, there's the answer. All right, it says, the score is farthest from building A at T equals 9. The distance, the greatest distance is 140, and there's no units. 
Now, there is another way of doing this just by looking at it, but it doesn't go good for justification. But it's a quick way. If it didn't ask you to justify and it's just asking you for, where's the farthest away? Well, look, the area under this, isn't that pretty large? So if we're at zero, the area in here is how much change you had. So from here to here, you made a really large change. So you've got a long ways in the, away from A. Then here, didn't you go back towards A because it's a negative change? And you sum up that area, it's negative. So you went to the right quite a bit, but then you didn't go all the way back. The, the squirrel went, oh, God, he forgot his nut at home. So he runs back and goes, oh, no, never mind, I got more the other way. So he starts heading back. Okay? So he kind of changed his mind. He's like, oh, never mind, I got a nut over there. I'll go back. This, this is a spastic squirrel. It goes back and forth. So you see, in the end, this is the farthest he gets because this area is bigger than this. So this one, he doesn't get back to this point because that area is too small to counter all that negative distance. All right. Find the total distance the squirrel traveled during the 18 time frame, whatever that time is. They didn't even say what units. So if I want the total distance traveled, look down here. You integrate velocity, but you have to do the absolute value of this. Okay, didn't above, see there's 140, 50, and 25. Aren't these these numbers right here? 140, and then this was 50, and this was 25? Yeah. Those are the values we calculated earlier, so don't recalculate them. We did them in this chart. Um, but the reason it's absolute value of velocity is here, he went in the positive direction. So that area was 140. This right here was 50, but it's in the negative direction, but isn't it still distance? The guy still used energy, he still moved, he just went the other direction. So don't you have to technically, watch this, don't you have to technically flip that graph over? Isn't this graph gonna flip over now? Yeah. So this got flipped over, now area, 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 don't you have to have that be a positive? So aren't you adding all those because you don't want that negative value to take away? Now that negative value was important for position, because you needed to take away on position, but for total distance, you need that to be upside down, so you just add all those together, 140, 50, and 25, you have your total distance traveled. Write an expression for the squirrel's acceleration, velocity, and distance, x of t, from building A are the valid time intervals 7 to 10. So we're dealing with only from 7 to 10. Now, to get um, v of t, um, A of t, are you okay it's dealing with the slope? Isn't A the slope of V? So if we're dealing it from 7 to 10, aren't they basically just finding the slope from 7 to 10? Because you're doing the acceleration, you're doing the derivative of, so that's negative 10. By the way, they just use the points from 7 to 10. Are you okay with that? 7 to 10 right here? We're dealing between this interval, right, that line basically. Aren't we just dealing with that line right there? Okay, velocity. Well, to find velocity, isn't this your velocity function? So don't I just want the equation of this line right here? How do you get the equation of that line? Well, don't you need a point and a slope? Well, didn't we just find the slope of that line? Isn't the slope of this line negative 10? All right. And I need a point. So if I need a point, you guys, watch this. I can just do y minus, can I use 7? equals the slope, wasn't it negative 10? x minus, uh, oh, no, y minus 20, huh? Shouldn't that be 20? Yeah. And this should be a 7? Because look at the coordinate there. Isn't it 7, 20? So y minus 20 equals the slope that, now look right here. Does that look similar to this? Then they just add the 20 over. Do you guys see that? Don't just add the 20 over, then they make it a nice little slope formula. Is that okay as your velocity function? That's the equation of a line. The equation of the line is right there. And I moved the 20 over, now I got that. Do you have to use um, that no. point? You have to use one. You could have used this point too, right? Could you use, could you use that point? You can't use 0, 0. Can't use That's zero not nine. part of this line. No, zero, nine. That's not part of this line. This line, you have to use this coordinate or this coordinate in the negative 10. You have to use one of those two coordinates. Okay? Because this is the line we're dealing with. Just that line is the line of that function. Is it 0, 9 on like the line? 0, 9. Okay, you could use 0, 9. Yes, that coordinate would work too. That's 
I thought it was asking for You're the farthest distance. No. But no, no, it's asking for the velocity function. Yeah. Oh, sorry. So the velocity function is this right here. All right. You have a slope given from previous problem. And by the way, a lot of times they give you previous problems that help. Now last, it wants the position. So position, isn't position need the original position at time 7? Are we okay? That's 120. Now, that wasn't given anywhere, but... Oh, right here. See how they found the position at 7? Couldn't you find the area? Is that okay? From 0 to... Uh, but that right there is the position at 7 right here. So that area adds up to, looks like, I guess, 120. And then don't you add up the integral from 7 to t. And isn't this the function of velocity we just created? See the function equation for velocity? So 120, right here, they integrated it. Now they're going to put t and 7 in. And when you put t and 7 and add the 20, you get this function. And that's your function for position. So if I wanted to know my position at time anything between 7 and 10, I could just plug it in. That's kind of tricky. You did this for slope, for acceleration. You use the slope and a point to find the velocity. You use the velocity as a function and the initial position of, at 7 to find the position function. A lot going on there. This is a really long, 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 long problem right there.